Protectors of the Sunnah. Sunnah. Protectors of the Sunnah. Welcome to our series on belief in Allah. And this is the series of uh, that is the most important component of faith, which is Akida, Akida, Akida. Without Kida, you ain't Akida, you ain't got no faith, subhanAllah. And we have to have the correct um, uh, belief system. That's the problem because anybody, most people that you run into, even on the street, they will tell you that they believe in Allah, but how many of them are upon the correct belief system? That is the question. Most people, including Muslims, are not even upon the correct belief system. Well, in this series, we are breaking down what the correct belief system consists of. And I'm also teaching you guys different ideologies, you know, that that uh, contradict the true belief system in hopes that you can recognize them within yourself and change them. And so I have a quiz to start off with today. It's a short little quiz. And I did, I got my new, uh, I ordered a new mouse, but until then I'm just bear with me. Um, oh God, what is this? Okay. I did post the quiz up. Uh, yes, this morning. So you guys could work on it. It's just a, several questions is not much. Okay, so this is, this is, yeah, this is, that was 11. This is 12. This is series number 12. Okay, God, that was 11. Okay, so this is the quiz on what we discussed yesterday. And everyone look at the questions here. Question number one. We talked about how many humans, despite the fact that they were born upon the fitra, and you guys know what the fitra is now. Despite the fact that humans were born upon the fitra, many do not believe in Allah or turn to him unless something happens. What happens? What is it that is it that nine times out of 10 will be the trigger to cause people to turn to Allah? Who would like to answer? Let's put the hands up. Let's see. Give me a second here. Okay, Sister Jamila, go ahead. They'll turn back to Allah when a calamity or something like that happens to them. Then they'll say, oh, my God, help me. Exactly. Real easy question. Real easy question. Easy. Exactly, guys. That's just the nature of the human. And Allah tells us that, you know, we, you know, even though he created us upon the fitra, you know, once we come into this world, you know, our parents and our environment and all that stuff will shape us and mold us to be whatever, to believe in whatever we believe in. OK, and then a lot of people grow up not believing in Allah or not worshiping him correctly or associating partners. But then when something bad happens in their life, then they turn to God. The Christians are good at this. They don't go to church. They fornicate, adulterate, drink, party, get high and then let them get told that they got cancer. I have to go to mass. Then they'll start calling upon Allah and thinking Allah is going to help them after they done led their life of adultery and everything else. So they're known for that. And that's how just most people are. That's just the nature of the human, you know, to not want to acknowledge Allah and his existence and to not turn to him unless something bad happens in their life. Good job. OK, let's look at the next question. And you guys should know this answer because even my cousin Mukhtar has been teaching this. The Quraysh, the Quraysh Arabs did not believe in the existence of Allah at all. Is that statement true or false? I mean, a phrase. No, I saw your hand. Welcome back to the class. Go ahead. False. Okay. They believed in a, they believed in one God, but then they had them idols too, but they believed in God. One. Exactly. And this, thank you for saying that. And that's the problem. 
Uh, nowadays, since the Muslims today, <clears throat> it's like I said, excuse me, guys, I just woke up. I'm speaking from my stomach, which I need to stop because it's going to make me have a GERD attack. Oh, calm down. And my asthma. COVID. Okay. That's the problem, guys. Um, no, y'all know I'm going to be afraid of that COVID. But um, yeah, the Arabs. The Arabs. A lot of people convert to Islam. And since they're the people that give them Shahada or the Muslims that they are surround, don't teach them. Because uh, once you convert to Islam, you're supposed to start learning if it ASAP. And we start off learning what it means to believe in Allah. You should be learning about the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Everything I'm teaching here is what every new convert should be learning upon embracing this religion. You know, you should be learning about the companions and all that because these things help to build your iman. But people are not learning that. They're not teaching them that. They're busy traveling around the world speaking about their converts, their conversion stories, or thinking about uh, trying to compare Islam with Christianity and all that dumb stuff. Well, they always ask me, Sister Layla, why is the Prophet Muhammad's mother and father going to hell? Why are they in hell? Why were are his people in hell? The, Allah, didn't, wh Allah says he don't punish nobody who he didn't send a, a messenger to. That's the key. They did uh, believe in, in Allah. They just chose to associate partners with him. It's not that the Prophet Muhammad's mother and father never heard of Allah. If you were to ask any of the Quraysh, they, they never, Allah says it in the Quran, they never deny that Allah existed. But they still chose to associate partners. That makes them kafir. That's why the Prophet Muhammad's mother and father will be in hell. That's why we don't use titles. Like the Prophet said, do not use uh, titles to uh, give uh, kafirs titles. You and listen to some people speak about the Prophet's mother and father, the Honorable Lady Amina, the Honorable. We don't give titles like that to a kafir. You know, she was the woman that brought him into this world, but she did not believe in Allah. She chose to worship idols, even though she knew that Allah existed. Just like Abu Jaha, Allah speaks about them in the Quran. He speaks about Abu, Abu Jaha and, and them in the Quran. If you were to ask them, Allah says, if you were to ask them who created the universe, they will say Allah did. If you were to ask Abu Jaha, if you were to ask any of them who created the universe, Allah, but they still chose to not worship him. They worshiped idols. Just like with the children. And I wanted to be emphasized if Israel's if Israel, if you're listening to me, because I probably won't be awake for the kids' class again, but emphasize with the children when we're, te we're teaching the children about the life of the prophet, they saw in the movie, in part one of the movie. How uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's grandfather and great grandfather, they used to, uh, they believed in Allah. They would say Allah is the Lord of the Kaaba. Allah is the one that created the Kaaba. Allah this and that. But they still chose to worship idols instead. They put those idols inside the Kaaba and chose to wor worship them. So it's not that they didn't believe in the existence of Allah. They didn't think he, him worthy enough of worship. Y'all understand that? And Allah mentions that in many verses of the Quran. So, and that's what people are like, well, yeah, that's a kafir. Yeah, they knew of Allah's existence. They were the descendants of Ismail. You know, they were the descendants of Prophet Ismail. They knew all about the story of Ismail. They knew all about the story of Abraham. That's why the Kaaba was so sex sacred uh, to the Quraysh. They knew that Allah existed, but they still rejected him. Just like a lot of people today, Muslims today, you say you believe in Allah, but you reject him by denying his decree. You reject him by loving your husbands and your wives and your children more than you do him, okay? By loving money and the life of this world more than him. The same way people are today. People never change. 
It's the same thing. That's why the Quran never gets old. Okay. So good job on that answer. Yes, the Quraysh, they did know that Allah existed, but did they believe in him and worship him alone? No. So they knew Allah existed. Allah says that in the Quran, if you were to ask him who created the Kaaba, who created the universe, they will say Allah, but they still don't believe in me. Okay, good job. Let's look at the next question. What is it that for what I mean, what forces stand between man accepting Allah's existence? We talked about that. Even though people believe in Allah, you know, even, even I mean, even though people are, are born, we're created with a heart, and Allah puts inside our hearts when we are in that womb the belief in, 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 uh, in Him. When we come out in this world, what forces stand between us accepting that Allah exists? Go ahead, Sister Rahima. I mean, Ra yeah, Ra uh, I saw, I'm, I'm looking at that, trying to look at the screen here. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Sister um, Bit Muhammad, you know what I'm talking about. Go ahead. Rahima and Amira. Oh, that's Amir. Oh, that's Rahima and Amira. MashaAllah. Go ahead, Rahima. Mama. Yes. The dance? Yes. The gin. Did you guys hear the baby? Yeah. Did y'all hear the baby? Yeah. Oh my God. Is that, is that the two year old? Yes. Oh, oh that's y'all hear the two year old. Now, do y'all understand that hadith? Whereas the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, uh, to illustrate to the companions. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam illustrated to the companions how the fitra works. A little girl was in the uh, was sit, was listening. Uh, a, a woman was holding a little girl, her age, two years old, in her hand, her arms, when the Prophet was speaking. And the Prophet told the little girl, "Come here." And he said, "Where is God?" She said, "Up there." The little girl, just two years old, up there, that's when the prophet said, this is the fitra. Just like this baby here. You know, this baby here knew, two years old, what forces stand between you uh, uh, worshiping him up there? The jinn, the jinn, she knew, if that's the fitra. So we're born automatically, Allah puts that in our heart as infants and children, recognizing that Allah is one. But as we grow up and our parents mold us and shape us, we either become a Christian or a Jew, but just like this baby illustrated, her mother is, is molding her and shaping her. At two years old, this baby can recite the Fatiha. Y'all heard her. She's the one that was on video the other day with me. You know, cute little thing with little gap teeth. The gap that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had. By the way, you know, you know the Prophet had a gap in him between his teeth like you do. So, so you love that gap. Okay. But just like she did, she can say Fatiha, she can say Bismillah, Rahman Irahim, and uh, uh the jinn, the jinn around. That's the fitra. That's why you don't call yourself a revert. If you uh, embrace Islam, you are a convert. Because the word convert means to adapt a new way of life, a new ideology, a new character. When you call yourself a rebirth, you're saying that you're reverting back to infancy. This is not the correct term to use. Okay, if you are a convert, reverts are people who apostate from Islam and then go back to it. You don't want to be that either, if you know. It's good you came back, though, but... You know, let's try to avoid all that. But mashallah, the jinn is one of the forces that stand between us uh, acknowledging and worshiping Allah. And what are some more forces that stand between us and Allah? Who else would like to answer? There's other forces too. The jinn is the number is one of the number ones. What's another one? I mean, I can't see the screen. This mouse is broken. Whoever got your hand up, go ahead and answer because I can't move my screen. Latifa, there it is, Latifa. Go ahead, Latifa. The environment is another thing that affects that, you know, being around people and 
doing different things and you just kind of go along with what's happening. Exactly. The environment plays a role too, that this is another force. That's why I taught you guys about the predestiny. Allah creates our environment. He's the creator. He creates good. He creates evil. He creates the environment. He creates all the influences. And why does Allah do that? Why does Allah create bad environments? Why does Allah create evil? Who can answer that? Anyone? Get on the mic. Just to test us. Exactly. To test, test yeah. Exactly. To test your faith. So that's why you see all the, everything connects. Everything I'm teaching y'all connects. I spent two months teaching y'all what predestiny is. So you can understand, now that you guys understand how predestiny works and how all about the Carter, now you, this belief should impact you even more. You know, so environment, the environment, Allah will surround us. Like he said, the road to paradise is surrounded by all type of obstacles. And Allah does that on purpose just to see if you're going to choose him. Choose him in his way. Okay, so environment is another uh, factor that stays in the way. What else, Zarina? Go ahead. Yeah, that's part of your environment, like the teachers, um, parents, and a lot of times the teachers are corrupt. You have to make sure they're on the correct Akita and make sure that um, they, you know, that they're teaching properly because it does influence you. Exactly, guys. The allies of the of Shaitan, the, the Aulia of Shaitan. Shaitan has his allies amongst man and the jinn. We have the Shayateen amongst the humans too. They're the ones that stand in the way. Like, for example, many of you are experiencing them. You're coming to my classes. Let me look at people like Marianne and Khadija and Dahare. Mashallah, they've been coming here and I'm so proud of Khadija. Oh, Khadija, you have come so uh, such a long way. They, they've been coming to the classes, learning the correct Akita. But look at how there's people around them. Like Mary Ann says, there's people around them. The people, some of their family members and friends are trying to pull them away from here. Trying, oh, trying to tell them what you're learning is not correct. They're trying to put doubt in what they're learning. You know, these are the, the shayateen amongst men. So the shayateen amongst the, the humans also stand between us and Allah. They want to pull us away from the truth and take us back to the bidda, back to the innovation, back to that uh, stuff that corrupts the the, uh, the dean. Yes, go ahead, Sister uh, Nisa. What's another factor that stands? Yeah, another factor is Allah created us with the criminal nature, so our own selves can get in the way. Mashallah, exactly. We oppress ourselves. This is what Dr. Asim was teaching everybody. You know, you don't want to be an oppressor against yourself. Remember, we're always fighting against the whispers of our personal gen and the inclinations of the soul because the human soul is criminal by nature. Allah created the soul. We guys, you're learning that in my resurrection class. Allah created the soul. The soul is attracted to the things that are bad for it. The soul is attracted to drugs. The soul is attracted to sex. The soul is attracted to all those things that are harmful. You know, so we're busy trying to tame our soul, train it. That's why I did that whole series on how to purify your hearts. We have to train our soul to submit to Allah. <clears throat> train your soul to not give in to those desires. Otherwise, you're oppressing yourself. Whenever we speak about the self, we're speaking about the soul. Good job, Anissa. What's another factor that stands between us and uh, worshiping Allah alone? Sister um, Norto, go ahead. I would say um, the people around us, like our friends and stuff, but I'm not sure if that falls into the environment. Yeah, that's good, though. It's good. It does, but it's good to be named. Be careful of your friends. Now y'all see why the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, judge one another based on our behavior. We do judge you. Remember, one of the things that the Cauteria will say is, you can't judge me. Remember, we talked about that. Any of those Muslims that's going around telling you that you can't judge another Muslim, they're Cauteria. You know, we're supposed to judge each other's actions and behavior. 
That's the only way we can determine if a person is harmful for us to be around. Okay, because we have to remember, uh, Allah says, so, uh, I mean, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, surround yourself with righteous people. Righteous people. How can I determine if, if Latifah is righteous unless I judge her from her choices in life? So we're supposed to judge one another. I'm not judging uh, whether she's going to heaven or hell. That's between her and the law. But I can look and see if she's smoking marijuana. I'm not going to have nothing to do with her. If she fornicating, adulterating, nah, party ain't here. If she's not wearing a hijab and she's not praying, sorry, can't hang out with her. So again, we have to be careful of the people we surround ourselves because they can stand between us and a law. And it happens all the time. People do what the people around them do. Like I tell my granddaughter, I tell her, cover up, put on clothes. You don't have to wear an abaya like me, but at least wear a, something that's loose fitting so that they can't see your shape. But she's going to do what her, the children around her do. That's why it's best to raise your daughters in a Muslim country. I don't care how corrupt the Muslim countries are, guys. Still, the, the majority wear cover up. You ain't got to worry about your grandkids walking around looking like Cardi B, subhanAllah, because they're going to do what everybody else is doing at that age. Uh, good job. Uh, what's another factor, Sister Precious? Go ahead. That stands between you and the law. Go ahead, Precious. Our, our, our experiences, like when somebody dies, instead of turning to a law, people turn to alcohol. Mashallah, that's another one of our Sunnah follower kids. Exactly. Just like the baby, the two-year-old said, the jinn standing in the way, like he said, you know, people that's doing drugs and all that crap, alcohol. You know, that stuff can, can stand between us and Allah. So we have to be careful, guys, of who we surround ourselves with and what type of environment we choose. We have to be careful of the environment that we choose, you know, uh, to put our children in. Because if you're raising your children in a bad environment, then what's going to happen? You know, they're going to become, they're going to succumb to that environment. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, Sister Layla. I know I normally don't butt in on your classes with the adults, but... You know, the children are here. And I'd just like to share, Sister Layla, one day I was sitting outside Amina Fresno's house. She lives in a good neighborhood. But I heard her talking on the phone to somebody else. So I said, I'm going to find my way over to that person's house just to see who they were. And when I went over there, it wasn't in a good area, Sister Layla. There was another cat walking, and he then he stopped, and I saw him start licking something off the ground. I said, what that dude's uh, licking up with his tongue? Went over there, he was licking up some alcohol. Yeah, somebody had dropped a beer can on the ground, and that cat was licking up the beer. I said, this ain't the part of town I need to be on. I know Amina Fresno was trying to sell some of those cobblers. And she don't care where them people come from. But I know I got to mind my own business. I can't go around trying to spy on her like that because I was in a bad place. The cats over there, they drink beer. So environment is real important. Thank you for allowing me to share. By the way, is that Lady Fresno around? Tell I'm still got my eye on her. You know, that cat just has to just pop up. I'm sorry for the adults, but, you know, Mr. Cat likes to come in here whenever he hears the children. But he brought a good point. You see what happened when you leave your faith field environment. That's when the forces against us really attacked us. Now, he spends most his time outside Amina Fresno's house 
She's in a good Islamic neighborhood because guess who lives across the street from her? Precious. So he left his good Islamic environment being nosy and went to another environment that had alcohol. So he brought a real good point up, guys. Whenever we leave our faith-filled environment and go to an environment that is not filled with that faith, that's when the forces against us become even more severe. That's when the forces come at us. Now, if he was weak in his faith, he could have went over there and started lapping up that beer off the ground too, just to see what it tastes like. But he chose to go back home. Thank you for sharing, Mr. Cat. Yeah, what's another influence that stands between us and Allah? Go ahead, I mean the Fresno. The parents. The parents is the one that determined uh, what the child going to be. He owned the Fitra, but they behind to turn him off the Fitra. Exactly. That's, and that's why it's so important for you guys as parents to learn the Dean. And this is a problem nowadays. We're so caught up in the, the life of this world making that for loose, the money. Nowadays, it takes two incomes here in America. So the women are working. The men are working. The children are home by themselves being raised by the television, YouTube. That's what happened to my granddaughter. My, my daughter was working as a nurse after she uh, divorced her husband because uh, her husband used to be home with the kids, okay? And the kids, that's when Jayla and them, they were only kids. They wore hijabs and stuff then at the age of 10, 11, 12, 13. But then when my daughter got divorced, you know, and working as a nurse, she left the kids at home by herself. That's when Jayla fell in love with Cardi B. He jab came off. Cardi B clothes came on. So again, a lot of times, guys, the parents, as we're out making that money, we have to remember that the, the children still should be the priority. You don't want to leave the children alone to the forces of shaitan. You have to still educate yourself of the religion and then in turn go home and teach it to your kids. Otherwise, they're going to grow up to be Cardi B. Okay, good job. What's another factor, Brother Tarek and Yasmin? Um, some people are just too arrogant and heedless to accept his existence. And that's the problem with the Quraysh. That was the problem with the Quraysh. You know, like I said, Abu Jahal, Abu Lahab, all of them, they believed, they knew that Allah existed. But they were too arrogant to believe in him, too arrogant to submit to him, too arrogant to worship him. The, and that's what happens here. That's why I tell you guys as students, I know sometimes as a teacher, I have to come down on y'all to try to push you, to push you to open up your minds. But the one, your gen doesn't like that. Your soul doesn't like that because the soul is criminal. The gen is evil. So they'll start telling you, oh, just leave. Don't come back. And she's mean. Turn against her. You know, she's not looking out for you. When I am, you know, uh, you don't want arrogance to stand between you learning the truth and accepting it. You know, that's what happened with the Quraysh, you know, with Abu Jal and them. They were too arrogant to accept the fact that Allah is one and that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even though he was their own blood, their own relative, and they knew he was a good man. They, they were too arrogant to even accept him. So again, you know, arrogance and heedlessness that's the, another big factor that stands between man's uh, a submission, submitting to a law. Okay, any other ones? Go ahead, Zarina. And this is incorporated into what you were saying about just the ignorance of our dean and also, you know, the meaning of the Quran. I was telling my daughter about, you know, the falak and why we have to understand the meaning. Because um, when we are ignorant, it leads to doubt or fear and then that can lead to disbelief. So I was explaining right. to her the protection of Falak and what, why we're studying it. And so. Exactly, doubt, 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 and fear. This is why I try to uh, tell you guys, never be afraid to get on that mic to ask a question about something and never doubt your faith. You know, something that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam emphasized for us as Muslims is certainty of faith. And that's why he told one of the companions, believe in Allah and hold firm to that. 
Don't allow anyone or anything to cause you to waver in that belief. Don't allow anyone or anything to, to come between you and the law and put doubt in your heart. You know, doubt and fear are two things that can stand between us and our worship of Allah. And Latifa, you got another one? Uh, yes, the influence that scientists have with their research and things like that, it can only be cause and effect and not what Allah said or what Allah did, but a cause and effect at uh, existence. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Exactly. And this is a big problem today. These Muslims today go to school and get these PhDs in psychology, which is garbage. It's a garbage degree. You waste your time, your money. Anybody tell me they got a degree in psychology, I laugh. I say, what a loser. Boy, he's a you loser. I'm sorry, he's a loser. She's a loser. I wouldn't marry you. I wouldn't touch you. Not with a 10-foot pole because you sold yourself out for a petty degree. You should have went on and been a nurse. Physical therapist even. X-ray technician. That's better than a daggone psychology degree. You're nobody. You're nothing. That's why you sit on the internet pretending that you are something. Because in the real world, you're a loser. You ain't going to find no job that pays more than minimum wage. You're a loser. You know, we have to stop allowing these uh, people, these psychologists and scientists, you know, to try to call, uh, to stand in the way of us submitting to a law. We have to stop listening to them try to use their logic and all that crap, you know, that they can't because they cannot rationalize or logicize how a law created anything. But they'll sit there and talk that crap that they talk. And that's we're going to be we're going to talk about Darwin's theory today. I'm going to show you how a law refutes Darwin today in today's lecture. OK, good answer. Let's look at that. I think is one more question. I think I only gave you four. Let's see. Last question. What verse? of the Quran forces rational minds. And Natifa, that was the best question, but that's gonna be our introduction. What verse of the Quran forces rational minds to accept that Allah does indeed exist? For those psychologists and um, the philosophers and all that crap that think they can use logic and, and rationalize things, there's just, there's two verses, or really it's more than two, but what verses did we go over yesterday uh, uh, that uh, will force them to stop all their filler busting and just accept the fact that Allah does indeed exist? We talked about two of those verses yesterday. Let's see, Sister Shamza, go ahead. Um, the verse that says, were they created by nothing or did they create themselves? Mashallah, that's one of the verses right there. You know, you want to sit there and rationalize, you know, how a law, you know, uh, does a law exist? Does God exist? Did you create yourself? That shuts them down right there. Any other verses? Go ahead, Sister Sharmila. Mashallah. Good job, Shams. I love you. Welcome back. Sharmila, go ahead. It's my best student. She's one of my best students here. Go ahead, Charmi. Any other verses? Can you, you know, her mic, your mic? Right, let me see if I can help her with her mic. Hold on. There you go. Can you do it now, Sharmila? Yeah, the cool who a wall who I had. Right there. That one verse and that Dr. Assam, look how it took Dr. Assam uh, uh, a, a month. Just explaining cool who Allah who a hut. Allah is one. You know, and the next one is is Ayatul Kursi too. Ayat Kursi to it. That's another verse. It speaks of the throne, how Allah is the uh, is the, the Lord of the throne. Okay. That verse there too, the prophet would use those two verses, you know, to, to cause the those um uh cauteria back in his time. You know, who want to try to rationalize the existence of a law, you know, to, we don't need to hear all that science and crap. You know, are you the Lord of the throne? Are you one? Can you say be and it become? If you are, if you are a creator, create a seed. Just make a grain, a seed. Good job. Any other verses? Anyone else? 
The good job, good answers. And there's, uh oh, my computer. There's other verses too, but those are the ones we spoke about. You know, yeah, Nisa, go ahead, go ahead. And, and Allah says in the Quran, who has created the heavens and the earth? Can you create that? So, we tell the science, you know, you can cut like Darwin. Darwin tries to rationalize, as we're going to talk about today, how this, the universe was created. And this is all garbage. This is you and your logic, your assumptions. Can you prove any of that? Can you go and recreate it? You know, so again, this is how we shut, how Allah teaches us to shut these people down who try to rationalize and logicize, you know, his existence. And mashallah, uh, yes, exactly. As Sakina said, you exist and you cannot deny this. That one verse right there says it all. You exist, don't you? Well, since you exist, that proves that Allah created you and Allah exists because you didn't have to be here. You didn't make yourself come into existence. You know, so let me put the PowerPoint up. Mashallah, you all did very good on this quiz. Uh, and it just shows me that you have been listening and paying attention to class. And I'm proud of you. Uh, let me put the PowerPoint up for today's lecture, because today we're going to speak about what Latifa introduced us with, uh, these theories of the scientists. OK, hold on here. Let me move my slide. OK, so this is session. Is this 12 or 11? I, I'll figure it out. This, well, we're gonna, this is 12. Yeah, remind me to change it. OK, but when, before I upload this video. OK, this is session 12. Today, we're going to speak about theories that try to define the creation and how Allah refutes all these theories. And this, and this is also shows the miracle of the Quran. It also shows how Allah exists because Allah refuted Darwin, Darwin and his theories. And he refuted all these theories before they were even born. You know, Allah shot. Darwin down in that Quran. Okay. And, and this was before Darwin was even born because the law knew that Darwin would come along with all these theories of, of, of creation. Well, listen to how Allah refuted him. Okay. And there's a lot of unbelievers that say that nature is the creator. You ask people, well, who created the universe? Who created the world? Who created you? Who created me? They say nature, mother nature. Well, how do we refute this? We refute them by saying, what do you mean nature? Are you speaking about the essence of things? Or do you mean the laws that govern and control the universe? Or do you mean other forces beyond the universe that created and brought it into existence? And if they say that by nature, they mean the universe itself, then we do not need to bother refuting them because the falseness of this view is obvious. This view repeats the idea that we talked about yesterday, that the science came up with, yes, scientists came up with that we spoke about yesterday. This view repeats the idea that a thing can bring itself into existence. In other words, they are saying that the universe created itself, that the heavens created itself, the earth created itself, the universe created man and, and animals, they created themselves. This is nonsense. This is nonsense. Human reason refuses to accept that a thing can create itself. And to make things clearer, we tell them that a thing cannot create something that is more developed than itself. So how can nature create something that's more developed than it? Subhanallah. Allah. So that's how we refute these people who, who believe that the creator of the universe and of man and animals is nature itself. And then we get to these people. Over this time, the course of time, observation, of the appearance of maggots and the excrement of humans and animals, along with the formation of bacteria, 
uh, that comes from food. This has led some of these scientists uh, to say that living beings are generated by nature, okay? But again, Allah exposed the falsehood of this theory in the Quran, and we have the famous French scientist Pasteur. This man proved, and even though he was a Kafir, Allah gives knowledge to whoever he wants to give it to. So when these people were going around saying that uh, uh, life is generated by nature, the French scientist Pasteur, he proved that these maggots and the bacteria referred to did not generate themselves from nature, but their origins lay in something even smaller that we couldn't even see with the naked eye. And then he gave evidence which convinced other scientists that what he said was true. He took some food and sealed it away from the open air and killed the bacteria by boiling it. And no new bacteria formed in the food and it did not rotten. So thus, the food canning industry was formulated as a result of what this scientist proved. So again, so for those scientists who believe that uh, uh, living beings were generated by nature due to the uh, appearance of maggots and bacteria, Allah caused knowledge to be revealed uh, from him to uh, this scientist that disproved that, okay? And here we get to the people of Darwin and them. They suggest that nature is the laws which govern the universe. Well, this is the view of those who claim to have knowledge and who believe that nature is the creator. And by the way, we do have some people who call themselves Muslims who believe this. These are your, uh, the, they follow the um, Islamic scholastic theology view. You know, they say that uh, the nature is the creator too. They say this universe is running according to certain laws which regulate its affairs down to the last detail. They say that the events that happen in this world happen according to these laws. That it's like a clock which runs accurately and precisely for a long time and until it runs, you know, and it runs by itself without a controller. But these people are not answering the question, who created the universe? Instead, they tell us about the way in which the universe operates. And they tell us how these laws affect things. But what we want to know is who created the universe and who created the laws that you claim govern it. And of course, they can't give no answers. They can't give answers to that. And there's a group of Cauteria that operate off of that. Okay, and then for those who say that nature is a force which created the universe and that it is a living, hearing, seeing, powerful force, we tell them this is true, but your mistake is that you're calling the force nature. The force is a law. The force is a law. The force is a law. He is the one you know, that's causing everything to exist. And those who attribute creation to nature, they have predecessors who said something very similar, even during the time of the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course, they were the Dahriya, the atheists, and they attributed everything to time, a dahar, time. And Allah put a, a surah in the Quran about time in there. They say that uh, because the children grow up into adults and because adults grow up into old men and because old men die as time goes by and night and day alternate, they attribute life and death to time. And these people existed during the time of the prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is another Qadariya group, okay? And Allah refuted them in the Quran, you know, with that surah about time, listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. And they say, there is nothing but our life in this world and we die and we live and nothing destroys us except time. 
but they have no knowledge of it. They only conjecture. So Allah addresses them in the Quran too. And so that shows that these theories, these thoughts about creation existed even in the time of the prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah knocked them out one by one, one by one. So the people who attribute events to time and the people who attribute them to nature, both of them are misguided. And believe it or not, there are different sets of Qadariya today, of Muslims today who still believe in this crap, even though Allah refuted them. And now that get brings us to Darwin. I was listening on a social platform yesterday. I was in a group with uh, my brother Isa, and there were a lot of Arabic Muslims in there, of course, the PhD psychologists. When I say PhD psychologists, that don't mean nothing. Y'all know that. They're these losers, the losers. And uh, I was surprised to hear how many of them referred to Darwin's theories. And I remember telling my brother Isa, I said, my God, these Arabs are lost, man. You know, what are they doing referring to this Kafir man's uh, theories when Allah shot him down in the Quran? And I told my brother Isa, ain't no need of you sitting in here even debating with these idiots. These people are idiots. And they and the sad thing is they try to use the language of the Quran. As, uh, I said, I told my brother Isa, these people are crazy. But to this day, these are Arab Muslims with these PhDs in psychology and philosophy. You know, they refer to Darwin's theory a lot. Well, let's talk about it. Darwin's theory. This theory claims that the origin of all creatures were small organisms, which were developed from water. And then their environment changed them into new characteristics and they emerge in this life form. And these characteristics over millions of years led to the development of more advanced characteristics, which changed that primitive creature into a superior form. And you got this picture here. We started off as chimps, then we became apes, and then cavemen and all that, and now the android. This is the android, the robot, okay? Uh, this is the Darwin theory, okay? Also, this theory is based on what was noted during excavations that were carried out during Darwin's time. They would go and dig up the earth and look at the remains of people. And so he based on how people e evolved or changed over the centuries, you know, that uh, this is where he got his theory from. Okay. And it was also based on what was known in his time at his time about the resemblance of the embryos of different animals at the early stages of development, how they all look like the little tadpole and all that stuff. He based his theory on that, how most things look like the little tadpoles, the embryos of the living beings and the embryos of the ocean. You know, so this is the Darwin theory that we evolved over time, you know, from the chimp all the way to the, uh, the robot of today. Well, how does Allah refute him? Allah refutes Darwin so much in the Quran. Darwin says that there is a, uh, is a law that works in extermination and extinction of living beings so that only the fittest survive. You know, Darwin was the one that uh, coined survival of the fittest. And this is what they were debating in this group that I was in yesterday, the survival of the fittest. And he says that the, the most fit are the ones that pass on their characteristics until the strong characteristics combine to form a new species. Okay, this is the Darwin law. And can you believe Muslims are still ascribing to this today? Now there is indeed a law which works to the annihilation of all living beings, strong and weak alike. And y'all know what that law is. It's called death. Hello. So he's right. You know, the law that works to the annihilation of all living beings, weak and strong, is death. 
Allah decrees who's going to die and they die. But there is also a parallel law whereby there is cooperation between living beings and their environment, which we talked about, what cause a law created life. And he also created the means to sustain our life. So that's why Allah created the sun, the moon, the stars, the oceans, the wind, the rain, the plants, and all of that. These things were all created by Allah and they work together to sustain us. That's how we refute this. And that's how Allah refutes him in the Quran. So if there is a law of death or destruction, then there's also a law of life. And each of them has a role to play. A law created death and a law created life. You know, so we refute this theory of Darwin by saying, yes, you know, a law is the one that says be and it becomes. And a law is the one that says don't be and it no longer exists. Life and death is decreed by him. And this is a picture of Darwin. Uh, just put it up here so y'all can see him. And uh, da Darwin's principle of the survival of the fittest is one of the number one reasons why human life has been as it was. Guess who ascribed to his philosophy? Hitler. Hitler believed in survival of the fittest. That's why he called himself a Nazi and went around killing people, thinking that only the superior race should survive. Saddam Hussein had this ideology too, you know? So Darwin's principle of the survival of the fittest has destroyed human life because what it did was give justification for every oppressor, whether an individual or a government to destroy people. This is what Hitler did. This is what Saddam Hussein did. This is what the dude over there in Libya did. You know, they all ascribe to this survival of the fittest. We have to understand whenever the oppressor engages in oppression, he does not think that he's doing anything wrong. Instead, he thinks he's following a natural law. This is Darwin's theory. This is what Hitler said. This is what Saddam Hussein said. This is what the dude over there in Libya said. OK, they all say that we're just a not in, uh, uh, oppressing people. We're following a natural law. And in regard to Darwin's theory of natural selection, the tendency to mate with stronger individuals to eliminate the weaker ones. This is garbage, too. So all of Darwin's theories, you know, are ludicrous. But believe it or not, even though his theories are ludicrous and his theories are refuted by Allah and the Quran, there are people today, including Muslims, who ascribe to this survival of the fittest and natural selection, only marry those who are most strong. This is why they won't marry outside the family. We're going to keep the blood pure, marry your cousins and keep it pure and don't marry outside your race to keep it the same and pure. This is garbage. Okay. This is Darwin's theory and Allah refutes him. And that's how he looked. I wanted to put that picture just so y'all can see. Y'all see, you learn about him in school. He's a uh, garbage, okay? When the Quran speaks about the realities of past eternity, people, I mean, uh, of the past, people must listen and pay heed and listen to how Allah refutes Darwin. Allah says in the Quran and the interpretation, the meaning, Allah knows, but you don't know. All you have is, is, is theories. Also, Allah says, and the interpretation of the meaning, should not he who has created know the truth? And he, Allah, is the most kind and courteous to his slaves and aware of all things. He's not oppressing people, killing people, replacing people. How can people let themselves talk about their origins when they did not witness that creation. As Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning, Allah made them, Iblis and his offspring, not to witness the creation of the heavens and the earth. 
and not even to witness their own creation. So none of us witness our own creation. So how can we sit around a person like Darwin and theorize as to how it existed? And this is the danger of philosophy. This is the dangers of these type of sciences. And I know a lot of people are angry at me uh, for speaking against this. You know, that's probably why some people ain't been doing their stuff here like they supposed to, because they don't like me to talk about this, but it's the truth. You know, it's philosophy, psychology, those type of ologies, throw them in the toilet, flush them. It's garbage. It's cauteria. It's garbage. It questions a law. Like Imam Shafi said, people who ascribe to this type of science need to be dragged by their faces and beaten publicly because this type of science questions a law, questions him as a creator. It causes you to question your existence, your purpose in life. It teaches you to think you are superior than others or even too weak to not even be worth living. You know, this type of ology needs to be banned from Muslims, okay, who call themselves people who believe in Allah. So I don't care how angry people get about me talk, speaking against this. I'm speaking the truth. I'm carrying the banner that the companions had, that the four imams had, that Ibn Taymiyyah had. I'm carrying it for, take that for, for psychology, philosophy, and shove it in the toilet with Darwin. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna stop right here for today. So that's all, that also shows the miracle of the Quran, guys. A lot of the scientists, as Dr. Asim would tell you, have converted to Islam when they read the Quran, because they see a law refuting Darwin and his theories. They see a law showing how sick Hitler and these other men were even before they were born. And they say, oh my God, some of the scientists say a law is a law and they convert to Islam. Or you have real scientists like Dr. Asim. He's a scientist, but uh, he is, he's not no, he'll tell you, he ain't into that psychology. He has a PhD in food science, you know, food science, like uh, the French pastor had. And like he said, it, it, uh, uh, when you look at the read the Quran, it instills a person like his faith. It lets him know without any question that Allah is one. You know, so I'm going to stop right here for today. Uh, tomorrow, what I'm going to do is quiz you on this. We're going to talk about Darwin's theory on, in my uh, quiz to you tomorrow for you to knock it down. So when you come upon Muslims with this garbage, this survival of the fittest and all this natural selection and all that crap, y'all can refute it. And then we'll move on to the next uh, part of this uh this uh, series. Okay, so Supana Kala Huma Wabi Hamdika, Ashadwan Laila Haila Anta, Asakaruka Watubu Lake. Are there any questions?